Hi there, I'm Martha Higdon with Quilting by Martha. Today I'm gonna to show you a few rulers. Um, so when I do a quilt and I'm doing rulers, you gotta pre-plan a little bit. Not all rulers are gonna fit every quilt. So I'm gonna show you some three or four basic ones to do that I'm going to do today. So when I start with rulers, I have my ruler base on, I have my sure foot on, and I run in precision mode and then I have my needle in the down position. So what I did first is I went ahead and did in the ditch. So I used my in the ditch, um, HQ ditch ruler. So I did in the ditch. It gets right in the edge of the line so it lets me stay right in the ditch. And then I did piano keys across the top. I find piano keys to be the most simplest and easiest um, border design. So here is the HQ righty. It's a right angle. So what I did is when I lined up, sometimes I forget which line I'm on. So I'm gonna use painter's tape. And I may be okay with the top border, but time I get to the bottom, I've done forgot, okay, which line was I on? I could always roll back and check it out, or I could just put a piece of painter's tape um, on the ruler. So what I did here is I came across, all the way across the top, lining it up, with that line. Remember that the needle is a quarter inch away, but the great thing about this, um, it has a 90 degree angle, so I, I had to just slide the ruler across instead of lifting it every time. I'm gonna show you as we come down the side of the quilt, but I'm at my corner, so I have to make a lot of decisions here. Um, I could do the piano keys all the way around, but because these would be horizontal and these would be vertical, so I've decided that I'm going to do the continuous curve here in the corner. Not for sure if you can see my markings. I use my blue erase, and what I did is I took a quarter inch in. I'm notorious for cutting off my points when I'm using rulers because I forget that, oh yeah, the binding's got to come in a quarter of an inch. So this time, I marked it with my blue marking pen, and I just did a quarter inch all the way around. Then I'm gonna use my VersaTool ruler, and I'm gonna use this end of the VersaTool, and it's called my continuous curve. If you've had one of my classes, I try to teach it in just about every one of my classes because I love the continuous curve. So again, I'm gonna push down on this ruler into my ruler base. Notice that I do have the grips on the back of this ruler so that it grips to the fabric. So what I wanna do is I wanna line up where my markings are and then I'm going to bring the machine in to the corner. I'm gonna line it up, and my needle is a quarter inch away, so when I line it up, I wanna make sure that I'm lined up so that I hit that corner. Notice when I stop, it's in the needle down position. Then I'm going to turn my ruler this way. Again, I'm gonna line it up so that it gets into the corner. I line it up, just make sure that I'm right in the corner. Get to the corner and when I stop, it stays in the needle down position. Then when I go to turn my ruler this way, it's hitting the red snappers. Um, so uh, that's how I put my quilt on today. And so it's gonna hit the red snappers. So not all not one ruler is gonna solve everything. So instead, I'm gonna to have to go to a different ruler since I already have my red snappers on. So I'm going to go to the HQ. This is the two and a quarter slice template. I have one grip on the back. Then I'm going to push it in here so because it's a it would fit right in there. And what I need to do is I need to line this one up to where I would have been if I was able to use my VersaTool. So I'm gonna line it up so that I hit both corners so that I get right in on my blue line. That's where the blue line marking came in handy. I hit right in the corner, the needle stops in the down position. Then I can turn the ruler this way, line it up and finish it off. And that is a beautiful continuous curve in the corner. So, but now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do piano keys down the side. So I'm gonna go back to my righty. I'm gonna go back on that line. 
come down. And I'm going to go ahead and go across just to get started. And I'm actually lining up on my piece line. I've already done in the ditch just to help stabilize it. I come across till I get to that side. Now I can turn my ruler this way because I'm going to be pushing with the ruler as I come down the side. And so I want to line it up push wing with my ruler and I'm going to line up oops I'm going to line up on my painters tape that line there I'm going to line it up so that all my piano keys as I come down are equally spaced so I line it up and this is what I like about the right righty angle here it has a 90 degree angle so I'm not moving and shifting the um, ruler as often so I come in right to in the ditch and then I can move my ruler so that I'm keeping right in the ditch and lining up again with that dotted line or with the solid line with the painters tape and then straight up moving the ruler by using the ruler to move you're keeping um, your lines straight Plus, I'm pretty close to the batting area. It would be all right if it wasn't quite straight, but good habits. So then I'm going to line it up again, painter's tape, come back, and go down. Line it up again, and go back across. What I like about the righty is it's it lets you do the piano keys a little bit faster, and then you're going back, moving the ruler, and back and forth. So now they're equally spaced coming across. This is how I like to do my piano keys and how I like to do my borders because then you're controlling how it's coming down the sides of your quilt. So when I'm quilting with rulers, I do try to stay with either all rulers or rulers and free motion, or sometimes I'll throw in some pro stitcher. So on this quilt here, I did in the ditch to stabilize it. I did the right, the righty to do my piano keys. So you can come across and then turn and come down the sides. Then I used my Versatool to do my continuous curve. And when it didn't work, I brought in my slice ruler, which you can see is right in there. And I used my slice ruler. So, so far I've had in the ditch ruler, Versatool, slice, and my righty. So we'll see what other rulers I'm gonna use on this quilt. Some of you may recognize this quilt. It was from Ruler of the Month 6 back in 20, in 2020. So here it is, May of 2023. I did finally get it pieced a year ago, and then I decided I'm gonna to get it quilted, um, and I'm trying to use the most basic rulers. For me, working with rulers, they have to be simple. If they're complicated or requires me to do a lot of markings, a lot of thinking, I'm probably not gonna use that ruler. I like to be, uh, we all know rulers are not fast, but if I can do it as quick as I can, then I want to use the real simple rulers. So we're going to quilt through this whole quilt here with some different rulers. So right now I'm going to finish my piano keys on the right side, go to the other side and finish my corner and come down with piano keys. And then I'll think about how I'm going to quilt the rest of the quilt. So I hope this gets you started, um, lets you think about some different rulers and to see what you need and what works with, with each quilt. Again, I like piano keys, and um, that's where we're at with this. So check your Handy Quilter dealer for any of these rulers, and um, we'll see you back here soon with some quilting with rulers.